we'll, we'll talk uh, a little bit about it. But uh, we're going to talk about um, the way, we're going to talk about a couple of the ways, but we're going to focus on one of them, um, that objects have relationships. All right? Um, there, there can be relationships between um, um, objects. And let me just preview three of them, um, and then um, we can, we're going to focus on one of them today. One of them is, is called, uh, is just where one object uses another object. Uh, an example of that might be a class or a course uses a classroom. A professor uses a classroom. There really isn't that big of a relationship between them. It's just that those two classes might interact. For example, if, if you wanted to see if there were, um, if there were any available seats for a given class or a given course, the course class might interact with the classroom class. Right. But I could have picked a better example that didn't have class in it 15 times. But the, the course object could interact with the room object to determine if there were available seats or not. All right? So that would be a case of one object. And that's a very sort of casual relationship where maybe an object in one class calls some methods in another class. But that's... Um, I don't know what, what even that's called. That, that's a very, that's like sort of class A uses class B. Another kind of, of relationship that we've seen an example of is, is called composition. And that is where a class is, <coughs> or an object is comprised of other classes. For example, a student has a list of courses that they take. A student has a schedule. What's the schedule? A list of classes that they take. An order at a pizza shop has a list of pizzas as part of the order. In other words, one class is made up of other objects. It could be one other object or many other objects. And a, a good instance of that is if you consider an automobile class. An automo if you're going to write a class for automobiles, it might contain an engine object. It might contain a transmission object. It might contain a steering object, a brake object, and so on. All right? In that case, those things taken together comprise, they make up a car. A car consists of those pieces. So whenever you have a case where one object forms a piece of another object, that's called composition. All right? The third one is called inheritance. And you may have been familiar with that from other classes or, or just other stuff that you've read or, or done. Um, what is, how would you describe inheritance? You, okay, you have a trait that your parents have. That's a good, good description. Does anyone want to add to that? Okay, so the, the analogy of, of like a child getting DNA from a parent is, is accurate. Um, and um, so, so, yeah, that, that's good. Um, another way of saying inheritance is specialization. All right, I'm going to throw out some terms that relate to inheritance. Another term for it is specialization. And the classic example of this is if you like look in the animal kingdom, right? There are animals. Sort of underneath animals, there are mammals. 
There are birds. There are fish. And then there's a few others as well. All right. Uh, reptiles, amphibians, I can't remember all the different categories, but that's more or less what you got. These are all animals. All right. Actually, I'm missing a whole bunch of them. If we were going to do this for real, we have animals, then we have vertebrates, 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 and invertebrates. And then underneath vertebrates, then we have mammals and we have fish and we have birds. And underneath invertebrates, I don't know what you got. Bugs. Pardon me? Mollusks. UCT. Unidentified creepy things. All right. So this is a way of classifying. And if you think about it, this is a case of specialization. An animal is a particular thing. Vertebrates and invertebrates are just more specialized examples of animals. All right? They're, more, they're a special case of animal. Mammals are special cases of vertebrates. Dogs are a special case of mammals. German shepherds are a special case of dogs. And so on down the line. Okay? So, it's another way of saying it is specialization. So, you have general things, and then you have more specific versions of those things. Now, how do you tell if, let, let's throw out a couple other terms here. The more general are called superclasses. That's the more general. The more specific are called subclasses. Now, in a case like this, vertebrates are both a subclass and a superclass, right? Vertebrates are a subclass of animals and a superclass of mammals, fish, birds, and so on. So when you talk about sub and superclass, you know, usually you're talking about two, uh, two objects or two classes and you're comparing them. But the superclass is more the general and the specific one is called the subclass. Uh, sometimes they would call that the parent and child. But generally the better term is subclass and superclass. Or superclass rather than subclass. Now, a good way to determine whether an inheritance relationship exists is what is called the is a test. Or is a type of this. If you can plug in two entities and this forms a true sentence, then there's a good chance that there might be inheritance involved. With this one being the subclass and the second one being the superclass. So, for example, if I were to say an eagle is a bird. Is that a true statement? Yes. All right. It's a true statement because eagles are birds. Or if I were to say eagle is a type of bird. All right. That's a true statement. 
All right. Therefore, eagle would be the subclass and bird would be the superclass. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this later on because that doesn't guarantee that there's an inheritance relationship. All right? But it indicates that there might be a chance that there is uh, an inheritance relationship. What would be another example? A What about between engine and car? Is there an inheritance relationship there? Okay, why not? Whoever said that. Okay, because it's, it's a part, so you're absolutely right. Composition is a better thing. If we apply our is a test, engine is a car. Is that a true statement? No. An engine is a type of car. Is that a true statement? No. All right. So therefore, and we could flip it around too, is a car a type of engine? No. A car, is, uh, is, a car is an engine, or a car is a type of engine. No. Now, we could say that a car, uh, an engine is a part of a car, or a car has an engine, but that's a different statement than saying a car is an engine, or an engine is a car. So that would not pass the inheritance test. So not pass the is a test. That would indicate that what we have is we have composition. We don't have inheritance. So if we had an a automobile object, we would have one of its members, one of its instance variables being an engine object. What about car and motorcycle? OK. Is an automobile a motorcycle? An automobile is a motorcycle? Well, a motorcycle is an automobile. A motorcycle is an automobile. <laughs> is there anyone who disagrees with that? <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> As the insurance company asks the, the license bureau, you get a different license to operate a, a motor uh, a vehicle. Uh, yeah. Right. 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 In, in general usage, an automobile is not a motorcycle, and a motorcycle is not uh, an automobile. Now, you made a good point. What are both of them? Both of them are vehicles. So, a automobile is a vehicle. A motorcycle is a vehicle. So, we could have this relationship. We could have a vehicle class for which automobile and motorcycle are subclasses of. The drawing like this, usually it's drawn sort of like a hierarchy, and usually you try to put the superclass on top. But the arrow indicates that this inherits from that. How would a bicycle fit in this? Would a bicycle, does a bicycle have any place in this? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. I guess it would depend on how you de de define vehicle. Right? If you define vehicle as a, uh, a, a gasoline or a, a, a vehicle with an engine, then no. Uh, if you just define a vehicle, I mean, I would say a bicycle probably is a vehicle. Right? You, can, you can take a bicycle. People commute to work using a bicycle. All right? So I would say it is. What about bus? Is, is a bus a vehicle? Yeah. All right? So again, 
it's important to think of it in a, you know, to, to take off your computer programming hats and think in terms of like real world and, and think uh, in terms of does this make sense just as, as a sentence, a statement that this is a that. All right. So that's a test for inheritance. And there are times when you could argue either ways and like, like bicycle. I guess it depends on how we define vehicle. Do we define vehicle as a gasoline powered vehicle, for example? Or do we say a vehicle is anything that gets us from point A to point B? All right. Um, anything mechanical that gets us from point A to point B. So uh, there can be gray areas, but generally the is a test is um, the, the important thing. All right. What about, let me, let me, let me think of, let me try to think of, a, pardon me? Skateboard. Skateboard. I would say, yeah, skateboard is a vehicle. I would say inline skates are a vehicle. And then I would say that the ambulance that came to take me to the hospital after I've fallen on my inline skates is a vehicle. All right. Now, something, some things could pass the is a test for more than one thing. All right. For example, all right. I'm trying to think of a good example of something that fits two categories. Why is my mind going blank on this? Um, Well, this is this is a goofy this is a goofy example, but I hope it gets my point across. All right, a frog. A frog is an amphibian. That's a true statement. I think it is. Does anyone take a biology? Yeah. Well, well yeah, a frog is an amphibian. A frog is also a green thing. All right. That's, those are true statements. All right. Now, you have a limitation in Java and in most programming languages that something can only inherit from one superclass. When we talk later about what happens when you do inherit from more than one superclass, you'll see sort of the problem that relates to it. And the developers of Java didn't want to get into that. They didn't want the, to have the confusion of how multiple inheritance works. So you can't inherit from two things. So if we were to draw our diagram, We can't do this. We can't have frog inherit from both of these. So how do we decide which we inherit from? Which would you inherit from in this case? Amphibian, right? And why would you say that you, inherit, you would inherit frog from amphibian as opposed to frog from some green things class? Okay, that's a good way to put it. It's a larger parent to inherit from. What's another way of saying that? Okay. Okay. You know more about the characteristics it has and what you're expecting. Maybe another way to put both of those statements and to sort of combine them and add a little bit to it is that frogs have more in common with other amphibians than they do with other green things. All right? This can of lime kickstart is a green thing. 
What do frogs have in common with that? Not much, just that they're green. And forget that there's other color frogs too, all right? I, I was waiting for someone to raise their hand and say, well, there's some frogs that are, well, forget about them, all right? Um, so you look for the stronger relationship, what it has more in common with. Whenever you have a case of where something could possibly inherit from two different places, you look for the one that seems to be more meaningful and where there seems to be more common ground. And I think in this pretty silly example, it's pretty clear that frogs have much more in common with amphibians than they do other green things. So you can only have one superclass. Now, next week sometime probably, or the week after, we're going to talk about something that is called, um, and it's gone, interfaces, interfaces. Not user interfaces, but a, a, a concept uh, called interfaces that's similar to um, similar to inheritance. All right, and that you can have as many as you need. So I could make an interface for green things. And if it was important for my application to know and to treat green things differently than all other colors of things, then I could make an interface for green things. So, we're talking about in, in, uh, inheritance today, though. And for inheritance, you have to decide what the most important relationship is, and you have to decide it with the problem in mind that you're trying to solve, you know. You're liable to come up with different decisions if you're talking about, for example, a real airplane or a model airplane, right? Because with real airplanes, you do certain things. With model planes, you do other things. So in both cases, you could have an airplane class, but you might decide differently how to inherit it if you're talking about a model airplane versus a real airplane, all right? So only one superclass per class. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover, uh, I'm going to throw out a list of concepts out here and then we'll go back, I'll summarize them and we'll do an actual example. Yes? A class could only have one superclass. A class could have as many subclasses as necessary. So for example, and I'm going to show my ignorance here. I don't really know any other amphibians. I think a newt's an amphibian. I could also inherit newt from amphibian. Or salamander. salamander. Yeah, there we go. So you don't run into a problem by having multiple subclasses for a given class. You would run into problems if you tried to have more than one superclass for a class. And that's where you have to decide what the more important relationship is. All right? Now, what does it mean when we say a class inherits from another class? It means that it gets for free, all right? By free, I mean that you don't have to do anything other than saying it inherits. When you say it inherits, this automatically happens. It gets for free all of the attributes and all of the methods that exist in the superclass. So let's talk a little bit in more concrete terms about, about our pizza example. And let's say that we have a kind of pizza 
that's a stuffed crust pizza. So let me download the example that we had last time because we're going to work on it in a second here. Um, Let's say we have, in our pizza shop, a stuffed crust pizza. First of all, does that fit the inheritance test? Yes, it does. Stuffed crust pizza is a type of pizza. That's a true statement. All right? And it's important, too. All right? It's important. So what does that mean? That means that whatever we have defined on the pizza, we automatically get in the stuffed crust class. So we don't have to go back and redefine all the attributes, all the methods for pizza. So let's look at our pizza class here. We have... Pro I did not know that. We have a string for uh, size, a string for crust, a string for pepperoni. All right. A stuffed crust pizza gets all these attributes for free. We only have to do one thing. We have to do one small thing. We're going to change this to private, from private to protected. one small thing that we have to do. What's the difference between private and protected? Private means that only this class can use those attributes. No one else, no other class can use those attributes directly. All right? And we said it's a good idea to make our attributes private. Well, I lied just a teensy bit. That's a true statement unless you talk about inheritance. When you talk about inheritance, you want the subclass to be able to use those attributes. All right? So therefore, protected means that this class and the sub, any subclasses this class has can directly access these attributes. So all these methods. All the set methods, they're already done for our stuffed crust pizza class. Has pepperoni, set type of crust, blah, blah, blah. It gets all these methods, all right? However, given that it's a specialized case of a pizza, there's bound to be some differences between a pizza and a stuffed crust pizza. For example, maybe the bake time is different. Maybe you bake the pizza a little bit longer. Or maybe the cost is different. Maybe it costs a couple dollars more if it's a stuffed crust pizza. All right. Or maybe there's some additional attributes on a stuffed crust pizza that isn't there um, for uh, a regular pizza. Like, for example, what it's stuffed with. Do you want it stuffed with um, mozzarella or, or provolone or what kind of cheese you want it stuffed with? All right? Marinara sauce? I don't know. Whatever. So when you have a subclass, it gets everything that's defined in the main class, plus you can add stuff to it that is distinct to just members of that particular subclass. So in the case of a stuffed crust pizza, we might add 
a stuffing stuffing material. I don't know, that sounds weird. It sounds like we're making pillows or something. But, but you know, stuffing cheese. That also sounds weird. I don't know. We'll come up with some name for it. Stuffing ingredient. There we go. That, that doesn't sound too bad. Now, stuffed crust pizzas have that, and regular pizzas don't. So regular pizzas, have, or stuffed crust pizzas have everything that a regular pizza has, plus it has some extra things. And if you think about it, all right, that's kind of how it is with inheritance, right? If we were going to create, if we have a vehicle, you know, and we inherit from that a, a motorcycle and an automobile, there's things that motorcycles have that every vehicle doesn't have. We could make some general statements about some of the things that a, every vehicle has. Every vehicle probably has a maximum speed that it travels at. Right? Whether you're talking about a skateboard or whether you're talking about an automobile or a motorcycle. There's a maximum speed that it goes with. There's a number of passengers that can be in the vehicle. Right? And that depends on the kind of vehicle it is. So we can make some general statements about the attributes that a vehicle has, but there are going to be some things that each specific kind of vehicle has that other vehicles don't. A motorcycle has a kickstand, for example. An automobile doesn't, just to name one difference. All right? An automobile has a roof, whereas a motorcycle doesn't. All right? uh, a convertible could be a type of automobile, right? So it could inherit from automobile. So maybe it has a roof, but that roof behaves differently. So when you create a subclass, you are interested in coding the differences between it and the superclass. After all, if there's no differences between it and the superclass, then you don't really need a subclass. All right? If there is really no difference between a stuffed crust pizza and a regular type of, of pizza, then we could just maybe, I don't know, make a type of crust stuffed or something like that. All right? But if there's really some differences, like for example, maybe we charge more for a stuffed uh, crust pizza. Maybe we need to get what ingredient we're going to use to stuff it with. Maybe we need to um, um, charge more for a stuffed crust pizza. If there are key differences, then we're going to create a subclass and we're going to implement those differences. Now. How do you implement those differences? Well, if it's a new function, and if it's a new attribute, you can simply add it into the subclass. You can also override a function. What that means is, for example, if there was a different, there was a different rule for calculating bake time for a stuffed crust pizza or the cost for a stuffed crust pizza. Then we could create a new function to calculate cost that has the exact same name, exact same signature, and that would be the function that took effect for stuffed crust pizzas. We could override that function. But we don't have to duplicate all the functions. We only have to duplicate the functions that are different or the functions that are new. All right? So, we implement, we code the differences. New stuff or different stuff. All right? One last thing is that subclasses don't get constructors. You have to redefine a constructor. So constructors don't inherit. So if I have this constructor on my pizza class, there's a couple things I need to do, but I need to also create this constructor on my stuffed crust pizza class. So let's review before we, we jump off into our uh, example. The is a test. Subclass is a type of superclass. If you can make that statement and fill in the blanks with the subclass and the superclass, then 
there's a good chance that it truly is a sub and superclass and you can inherit. All right? Another way of saying it is that the subclass is a specialized version of the superclass. It gets all attributes and methods. And again, we probably in most cases want to use protected instead of private. We code the differences. So we only have to write code for the new attributes, new methods, and any methods that are changed. And finally, constructors don't inherit. All right. So let's go in and let's make a let's make a subclass for stuffed crust pizza. And I'm going to put in the following rule that I'm going to, I'm going to say the two rules. I'm going to say that Stuff crust pizzas have a new attribute, stuffing ingredient. Ah. Stuffing ingredient. I'm going to say that it takes four more minutes to cook a stuff, to bake a stuffed crust pizza than it, than it uh, it takes to bake a regular pizza. And finally, I'm going to say that they cost $3 more for these. All right. So, let's go and create the stuffed crust pizza class and let's implement these things. Now, I'm going to do my, we're going to do this in a couple passes. We're going to refactor it. I'm going to write it a certain way today. On Monday, I'm going to go and revise it a little bit. So this isn't my final answer if we were playing whatever that game show was. Do you want to be a millionaire? This isn't my final answer. I'm working towards the final answer. All right? So, Let's go in and let's create my class. I, I keep going back to this. Well, I'm kind of thinking out loud here. I'm going to go create a new class. First of all, how do I say I declare my class for stuffed crust pizza? I have to say, though, somehow that it inherits from the pizza class. You don't import. That's a good thought. All right. You refer to the pizza class, you don't really call it. You have to refer to it in such a way to say that this inherits from that. And the key word for that is extends. So we're adding stuff here. It extends it. We're going to take what's in the pizza class, and we're going to add to, add some stuff to it. Add some stuff and change it. So we're going to extend that particular class. All right. So let's look at the pizza class. Do I have to define any of these attributes 
in the stuffed crust pizza? No. Why? By virtue of this class extending that class, it gets those attributes for free. Is there a new attribute for stuffed crust pizzas? Yes. There is a string for stuffing ingredient. We're going to default that to mozzarella. All right. We might change that later on, but for now, we're going to default that. All right. So I don't have to declare any of these attributes, and yet those attributes are available in this class because we this class extends the pizza class, and these are protected, not private. We'll come to constructors in a minute. We're going to leave those for uh, a minute or two. Do I have to repeat the set size method in the subclass? No, because that's what inheritance means. It means I get all the methods that are in the superclass. So I don't have to go and redefine these. So I don't have to redefine set size. I don't have to redefine set crust, set pepperoni, get size, get crust, get pepperoni. What do I have to redefine? I have to redefine because remember, there's a different way to calculate the time for stuffed crust pizza. And there's a different way to calculate the cost for stuffed crust pizza. So those I have to duplicate. Actually, I'm just going to copy those functions over because I'm going to use these as a basis of my new calculation. And what did I say? The bake time is four minutes longer. So I'm just going to go and say, well, a thin crust, stuffed crust, is 14 minutes. The bake time for this guy is 20 minutes. And I said the cost is $3 more across the board. So I'm just going to go and increase the cost for each of these by $3. Now, there's a couple more things I need to code. I need to code a get and set method for stuff, stuffing ingredient. Right? Because there is no get and set method for stuffing ingredient because there is no get and set method for uh, there is no attribute for stuffing ingredient. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say public void set stuffing ingredient I'm going to have my get stuffing ingredient. It returns a string. No argument. And returns stuffing ingredient. All right. Again, what have I coded? I've coded the differences. What are the differences between a stuffed crust pizza and a regular pizza? Well, 
it has an extra attribute, what we're stuffing it with. We need a set and get method for that extra attribute. And you calculate the bake time differently, and you calculate the cost differently. All right. Now the only other things that we have to do is we have to put in constructors because you do not inherit constructors. And right now, the constructors on stuffed crust pizza look like the same as the constructors for regular pizza. All right. Remember I said that this isn't my final answer and that we'll go back and we'll make adjustments to this next week. Because part of you should be sounding an alarm in your head that we have duplicated code. All right. Because duplicated code isn't a good thing. We have duplicated code when you create a stuffed crust pizza, as we have duplicated code. Uh, the, we have code uh, in the constructor of a stuffed crust pizza that duplicates the code in a regular pizza. So now, how do we do this? How do we go and test this and make sure that this works? Well, what I'm going to do, capital P where? Oh, in public, thank you. I thought you meant the P and pizza. You're right. Okay. So let's go and save this. I'm going to save it as a Java file, and I'm going to give it a name that matches the name of the class. So stuffed crust pizza. Let me go in my test class, and we're going to add, instead of a regular pizza, we're going to add a stuffed crust pizza. How do you suppose we're going to do that? Well, we can make any of these a stuffed crust pizza by simply saying stuffed crust pizza p equals new stuff crust pizza so we're going to make a large thin crust no pepperoni like because I copy the constructor, this constructor should work here. I'm going to make sure I save everything. I'm going to go in the command line and test this. Stuff crust. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are nice. Some of my classes I have a feeling see when I make typos like that, and they're just going to let me twist in the wind and, and not you know, be up here scratching my head why it doesn't compile. <coughs> All right, so CD desktop, CD pizza, 
All right, there they are. Java C, star.java, that should compile everything. Compiled cleanly, amazingly enough. Now when I run the unit test, watch what happens. Cost for pizza one is $15, cost for pizza two is $11, cost for order is $28. Remember, this was a delivery, so there's $2 added on. So that's why there's two extra dollars. Now, is that correct? Should that first pizza cost $15? Well, yeah, because the first pizza that we created was a stuffed crust pizza that was large, thin, and no pepperoni. What is the rule for a large, thin, no pepperoni? Well, large pizzas are $15, no pepperoni, no extra dollar, so that should be $15. How did it know to call the stuffed crust pizza calculation method instead of the pizza? Because I made a stuffed crust pizza object. Because I made a stuffed crust pizza object, it knows to call the right calculate cost method. Here's a twist, and again, that's what inheritance is all about. All right? We're going to talk more about this next time, a lot more about this next time. But I want to leave you with an interesting point. This order doesn't have anything, doesn't say anything at all about stuffed crust pizzas. It just says that I have an array list of pizzas, right? Doesn't say anything about an array list and some of those could be regular pizzas and some of them could be stuffed crust pizzas. How does that work? How can I add a stuffed crust pizza to a list of pizzas? Because it's still a pizza, exactly. A stuffed crust, getting back to the is a test. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear that. A stuffed crust pizza is a pizza. So I can do anything with a, with a stuffed crust pizza that I can do to a regular pizza. So if I have a function that accepts as an argument a pizza, I can give it a stuffed crust pizza. Why? Because it's still a pizza. Yet, it's going to use the right calculation method. It's not going to use the pizza's function to calculate because it's still a stuffed crust pizza. So it's going to use the stuffed crust pizza's method to calculate. And that is what is known as, my last big word of the day, polymorphism. That objects can be treated as having different forms. It's a pizza, but it's also a stuffed crust pizza. So I can use it wherever I use a pizza, but it's going to call the methods that are associated with the stuffed crust pizza, if ever I call any of those methods. We'll go over this more on Monday. So if some of it's still a little fuzzy, um, We'll try to clarify it on Monday. Any questions right now? Yes? When time is 5-2? Um, I think I pushed it back a week. I think I did. So uh, whenever it was due uh, originally, because I noticed, I noticed something yesterday I didn't even, or yesterday or the day before that I didn't even notice originally. I forgot to give you an, uh, the next assignment. I forgot to assign the lab six. So I just, okay, lab five will carry over till next week then. That'll be, that'll be due next week. And I think I adjusted the due date. So whenever it's normally due on a week, it'll be due um, on that day next week. All right, other questions? All right, see you up in lab. Remember, I do have to leave lab right at 10 to 3.